talking about contour of vision today and the new topographic guided laser vision correction. This software is seamlessly wired into your computer from the diagnostic unit, so it's not multiple re-entries. Outside the United States, we're able to use this software wirelessly, but unfortunately we hardwire this in the U.S. because of HIPAA issues. We look at the various patterns, and one is looking at the raw sagittal data. You want to make sure you've got good pictures, and you want to make sure that those pictures are consistent. So is this somewhat of the art form? It is a bit, but when we're looking at the raw sagittal data, you'll see that we're taking it down to the fine tuning, and we may or may not remove various topographies based on how they fit in all of the pictures. And I like to at least have four good pictures. You can take as many as you want. You can you know, average as many as you want. But I think for the most part, I think the bare minimum for me is four. Would I do less? Sure, but I try and that's kind of my number, my mark. Once I've decided which pictures I'm going to use, I've entered in my treatment, but I'll back that treatment back and see what the TCAT is treating. So what the contour of vision is actually treating. So what topographic changes uh, will we be changing on this corneal surface minus the refractive error? So what we're looking for really is are we inducing any other elements that may induce nearsightedness, astigmatism, uh, farsightedness. So what type of pattern do you see the contour of vision uh, creating and adding to or subtracting from your nomogram? And that's why I say start off with the easy cases because as you're looking at some of these, it starts the pattern recognition gets better. You start seeing what types of uh, nomogram issues you may be running into, whether a certain pattern is creating hyperopia and you may need to add a little myopia, but it's usually not very much. The refractive surgical suite is, is really nice together. Uh, it has the bed in the middle, which is automated, and primarily they're side by side, and they've added a lot of new software to the contour of vision, making uh, registration and ops option on the EX500, and also allowing for a faster, shorter suction time for the patient. So seamlessly, all of the data is brought in from the diagnostic unit into the computer, so the diagnostic unit uh, information is entered one time. You don't have to re-enter into each uh, machine, the EX500 or uh, the FS200. You don't have to uh, add to that. You can just basically uh, put the patient name and information in one time. So once that's transported over to the laser system, obviously we'll make the flaps. I do sequential flaps. Uh, so I'll do one eye. If everything's perfect, I'll do the other eye, and then I'll go over to the other side. But the nice thing about the newest software is, you know, we're uh, reducing our suction times uh, to a new low for me. Uh, the laser itself is already, you know, sub nine seconds in terms of how fast uh, we can get, you know, a flap made. And, and obviously there's checks and balances in the system, which I like. Uh, those are happening seamlessly behind uh, the, the scenes. So I think that for the most part, you're focused on making sure you're getting nice, flat applination and, and you've got good suction and you've got warning devices to let you know if vacuum one is good and vacuum two is good. I mean, you still get pseudo suction, so I say it's not foolproof, but I think that you still uh, have a lot of checks and balances in the system that are going to warn you if there's an issue. So the FS200, like I said, the flaps are sub nine seconds. Uh, this is the patient interface. Uh, it is checked with each individual patient interface. So each individual patient interface is checked. Uh, and that probably brings into the picture, you know, where we were maybe 10 microns variable. We're, we're probably sub 10 microns variable now and in the five micron variable range, which just adds more precision to the treatment. So if I want 100 micron flap, I get 100 micron flap. If I want 110 micron flap, I'm going to get 110 micron flap. Uh, I think, you know, uh, placing that in eyes is, is simple. Uh, I think that obviously it's a little bit different than, than maybe if you've used other platforms, but for the most part, it's easily learned. You can rotate the flaps right, left. You can put the hinge wherever you'd like to if, if you're into cyclo-rotating the flaps. Uh, you, you can move the flaps wherever you want to. Within the red uh, realm, basically the red realm is, is where you're limitation of what the laser can do. And the reason that is is because 
we're going to get a consistent 9 millimeter flat. With each click, you're not reducing the flat diameter. Uh, we make a pocket. That's to uh, allow for escape of the gas to prevent OBL and prevent any other issues. Primarily, the flaps are made in a similar fashion. I typically taco the flap back myself, as you'll see in some of the videos to follow. So this is actual patient. Placing the suction ring on. I still do a little bit of a superior uh, placement of my suction ring. Automatically, as the second suction, you see the two green bars on the right, is enacted. Uh, you see the blue line or blue circle. That is centering on the pupil. My technician really has to do very little in terms of, of issues with the flap. So that adds to the fact that we're not on the eye with suction very long. And the flaps are sub nine seconds. I like a nine millimeter flap, but you can make it smaller if you want to. Uh, we then move them over um, after we've made our flaps, of course, to the Exmer laser and we'll lift the flap. Uh, like I said, I do sequential treatments. So I'll do one eye and then do the other eye. And again, all this data entry is done one time. All these checks and balances are done behind the scenes. There's not really a lot that the technicians have to do. And now with the newest software, we have some of the best uh, registration for cycle rotation as well as iris and pupil identification that's allowing our tracker uh, to be a better uh, system and allowing for us to get what we want, which is true large optical zones, uh, fluid, uh, smooth transitions. And as you know, with the Exmer laser uh, of the Wavelight variety, the, the spot size is, is uh, uh, small and the variable spot uh, will basically fire and, and if it thinks the eye is not in the right position, it won't fire and it'll come back and fire that later. That's why sometimes if a, you have a patient with poor fixation, you can hear the laser actually sputtering uh, and it's not laying down uh, the treatment. You can stop and start if needed, you know, if you have to calm a patient down or there's any issues with that. But uh, I think it's a very easy laser to use. I like to use the fiducials, both vertically and horizontally. So the vertical and horizontal uh, uh, aspect allow me to line the patient up perfectly. That's perfect. That's all I needed. Primarily once I get the head in the gross format of vertical and horizontal uh, realm, I can then basically activate registration during the treatment and it's, it's a much uh, more robust way to get what we want, which is perfect alignment for asigmatic as well as uh, spherical treatments. And of course, we want the topographic treatments where they need to be taken. So this is as we're actually registering the patient. Uh, we need to have the pupil size, the same size as that seen in the diagnostic room. And we basically will turn the lights down low, just like we do in the diagnostic room. Lifting the flap is pretty basic. Typical lift like we have in times past. These flaps are, you know, easy to lift. Uh, I still like kind of a bit of a Velcro lift myself. I think that reduces the amount of energy into the eye. I like a true nine millimeter flap, as I said before. And then I typically will taco the flap back into position. That way I feel like I protect the hinge because these are huge uh, treatments. They're huge, true nine millimeter uh, treatments in some fashions. And, and we want to uh, make sure that when we're treating out that far that we're not actually ablating the stroma of the flap and inducing another refractive error that we can't know that's happening uh, while we're trying to maintain a uh, view of where we need to keep the eye and the line plane. But again, factors working for you, trackers doing a lot of that stuff as well. Treatments are a little sub two seconds per diopter, so it's about 1.8 seconds per diopter, which I think also helps in terms of getting great uh, treatments and great outcomes uh, because the patient's under the laser for less amount of time. And I think it, it's it's one of those things that we still use vocal local. Uh, we do give Xanax to the patient prior to the procedure, but there's a green blinking light that they're fixating on and there's four amber lights that surround that green blinking light and what the amber lights is just kind of, I always say that's kind of like looking at the beach, but the green blinking light is, is like looking at the lighthouse. So you really want to focus on the blinking green and, and, and just be aware that the four amber lights are there. I just think it's another way to stabilize, which we call neuro track. In slow motion, this is just me talking on the flat back is a little harder to see on the 
actual device itself. And then I just like to lay the flap back into position. The red beams you see are my uh, Heaney aim, aiming beams, so, so the patients don't see those. They're off to the side. What they're looking at is a blinking green light that's right in the middle. And you can see the green light coming on as I press on the pedal. Uh, it allows the patient to see a bright red light, and I always say the green blinking light's right behind that. So I press on the pedal, and then we can actually show the patient where the green light is. It gives another way to look at it. Uh, and also I can turn it off and on as needed. So my, my technician, if, if I don't think they're looking, they can say off, then on, then off, then on. And this is the treatment, which like I said, is sub two seconds uh, per diopter. It's about 1.8 seconds per diopter. And I think the patients do extremely well with this platform. And, with the current technology and contravision, we at one day so far in the first 50 patients have 100% 20-20. We have around 71% 2015 and right at 11% 2010. So I think that's pretty spectacular. And I thank you very much.